This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 1191 of Horse Tip Daily, your almost everyday morsel of helpful hints, useful facts, and practical techniques for horse folks. Brought to you today by Kentucky Performance Products. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip features Dr. Tanya Cubitt from Performance Horse Nutrition, and she has all of the basics you need to know about forage for winter. And we'll get right to our tip after this from Kentucky Performance Products. Her life was falling apart around her, but when she saw his sweet face and heard the low knicker, the pain eased. She stood in the stall for some time running a brush over his sleek coat, down his powerful muscles and over his tight, cool tendons. He cocked his back leg, waiting patiently. She scratched his favorite spot and was rewarded with a crinkled smile and outstretched neck. The stress flowed from her body, and she knew with him in her life, she would make it through. This love story is brought to you by Endure Extra, providing high-fat calories, direct-fed microbials, and natural vitamin E to support optimal condition and performance. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Call 859-873-2974 or visit kppusa.com to order today. And I'm so happy to welcome to the show Dr. Tanya Cubitt from Performance Horse Nutrition. And it's that forage time of year. Everybody's thinking about what to feed their horses forage-wise, uh, either because it's hard to find and expensive, or they're just going, oh my gosh, it's going to get cold. How much do I need? So today, Dr. Cubitt, which one of those are you going to address? Oh, Jennifer, thanks so much for having me back. And I'm glad to be talking about forage because, as you said, it is that time of year. And we'll kind of touch on a few of those. Um, I know for you down in Florida, it's a big issue because you have to ship in a lot of hay. Quality may not be the best. So we'll touch on, especially going into the wintertime, people are nervous about how much hay am I going to need to take me through the wintertime. Um, Storage becomes an issue if if I don't have a place to store it. Some people aren't quite sure. Um, how much they need, if they're going to be able to buy a big lot of it going into the wintertime. And one of the big things we have to remember is in most areas of the country, there's no grass. When we get to the wintertime, there's no grass growing. There may be snow on it. So the horse is pretty much 100% reliant on you for their fiber requirements. So what does that mean? If we take the average 1,000-pound horse, they should be getting a minimum of 1.5% of their body weight from forage per day. So for a 1,000-pound horse, that's 15 pounds of hay a day. Um, And if we calculate how long a winter may last, this sounds really scary. When I was writing this down, I thought, oh, gosh, five to six months of winter. But it really seems like that's how much winter some people have. Um, If we calculate out the day, so that could be anywhere from 150 to 180 days. So if we times 15 pounds a day by 150 to 180 days, that comes out to be about 2,250 to 2,700 pounds of hay per horse per winter. Most people have more than one horse, so that's a lot of hay. That's a little over a ton of hay per horse. You, when you when you did the math there, I thought because at one point I had twenty five horses that I was caring for, oh, and, we, gosh. and we made yeah. a lot of our own hay, so you know it was a big deal. But looking back and you hear that math, I'm going, oh, one horse only a ton a year? That's not bad at all. <laughs> oh, just for the winter time, just for the winter time, and that's a minimum. Um, obviously, if your horses struggle with maintaining weight throughout the winter, you want to make sure that you're feeding more hay. Now, if you I've... have a fat horse, use the winter to get some weight off them. Um, yeah. And just now, I have, I have a cur- I'm a curious curiosity question. Yes. Um, and we have to keep stressing the word minimum because I think the majority of us have horses that um, as soon as the grass dies out, they're not air, they're not air sponges anymore. 
You know, they have, mm-hmm. they have very normal nutritional needs and caloric needs when there's no grass. Um, is there an, an inherent risk in allowing a horse to have free choice hay, providing that the quality of the hay is appropriate? Um, if, if, as you say, it's not an, it's not a, just an air fern that is going to look at hay and get fat, then no, there's not a risk with having free choice hay. Because if you go back to think about what horses are designed to do, they're really designed to graze continually throughout the day. Um, a lot of research has shown around 17 hours a day, horses would just be con- constantly nibbling away on grass. And that's how their digestive system is also built, to have a small amount of food constantly trickling through the digestive system. So one thing I will stress is the less you feed your horse when it comes to hay, when you're getting down closer to that minimum, and really if you had your horse on a true weight loss program, you might go slightly lower than that, you really have to use more management strategies because the less your actual quantity you're feeding, you still have to be providing it to them, mimicking that natural grazing behavior. So if I'm feeding um, a horse that gobbles down his hay really quickly, 15 pounds of hay a day uh, in only two meals, he's going to have a lot of time where he's standing around not chewing on anything and probably developing gastric ulcers and other behavioral issues. Whole new headache. So... The less mm-hmm. you're feeding of hay, the more you have to, whether you're using slow feeder nets or um, you're breaking up your 15 pounds of hay into smaller, say, five lots and you go out to the barn five times and you're throwing in a little bit of hay just so that you can kind of stretch it out. Mm-hmm. The more hay you feed, the less management is involved with providing it to the horse yeah. because they're able to just kind of nibble away at it. Now, this was something I just kind of a light bulb moment the other day. I have, I'm a hay net nut. I love hay nets because I hate to see the horses standing on their hay, but I love to feed my horses lots of hay. And I have one hay net that has teensy weensy little holes. They're inch and a half, maybe two inches, really tiny hay net, whole hay net. And I have another hay net that's got kind of medium sized holes. If I make a fist, I can fit my fist through the hole when it's full, but not much more. Huge difference between the one that is the size of a half dollar and the one that's the size of my fist. I can take that same 10 pounds of hay and it will last him 45 minutes in that medium sized hole net. It'll take him three hours in the teeny weeny size. That amazes me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And those slow feeder hay nets are ideal when you're feeding towards the minimum end of the forage requirement because as you said it takes a whole lot longer and I know you know some people might be listening and saying gosh who's got time to throw hay into the store five times a day well no not many people do Um, most of us have to have a job to support these animals and this hobby that we have so um, finding ways that we can still make them fit into our schedule um, by using those slow feeder nets um, Creative uh, is ideal. You can really yeah. pack it. There was an article um, done a while ago in one of the magazines showing a lot of DIY um, ways to build the slow feeders as well. I mm-hmm. think I saw one that was pretty cool because uh, some people get concerned um, that their horses are yanking on it and still some hay is falling onto the ground using one of those big uh, plastic water troughs the rubber egg mm, water okay. troughs yeah. and putting the hay in it and then having a piece of mesh that kind of sits on top of it and floats down. So mm. they're never wasting any of it because it's always in the bottom of the feeder. So that's another option too. Cool. But as I say, the, the, the less you're feeding, the more management comes into it. I've been speaking with colleagues recently saying that we really need to flip-flop the terms hard keeper and easy keeper because from a management perspective, the fat or obese horse is really hard to manage and keep. You're right. You still need to feed them a certain amount of forage to maintain gut health, um, but the less you're feeding, the, the harder it is for us to manage them. But when you've got a thinner horse, you just feed them, feed them, feed them, keep feeding them. Just give them food all the time. Much, much easier. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I really want to stress the main, you know, we've, we've talked in the past about how forage is so very important, but going into the winter,
winter time. I mentioned earlier that they're they're not going to have any grass or they're one hundred percent reliant on you for their forage requirements from a gut health standpoint. But also we have to remember that how do you keep a horse warm in the winter time? The simplest way to keep a horse warm in the winter time is to feed him hay. I'm sure many of your listeners have stuck their hand in a bale of hay that was baled slightly damp and it's very, very hot. The exact same principle is occurring in the hindgut of the horse when those bacteria that live back there in the large intestine break down fiber, they create excess byproduct heat, uh, a byproduct energy, which is heat. So the simplest way to keep your horse warm in the wintertime is to provide them with plenty of fiber because it will keep them warm from the inside out. It's like you having a cup of coffee. Sometimes no matter how many sweaters you put on, you just need a cup of coffee or hot soup to get you warm from the yeah. inside out. And that's going to be the same with your horses. So from the management perspective, um, the weather is cooling off. Is it better to gradually increase your horse's pounds of hay per day over a, let's say, month period of time when cold weather is expected to start? Or is it better to go okay, I'm going to keep his hay the same because it's really not getting chilly yet. And then Sunday evening, you look at the weather report and it's supposed to have a cold snap come Monday morning and increase his hay by five pounds. Ideally, that would be the perfect way to do it, would be that gradual increase. Because in the fall, well, another huge issue that we notice is impaction colic. Because we have the grasses start to dry off and all of a sudden we think, oh gosh, we've got to feed our horse all this hay now. And we have twofold. The grasses have dried off and now we're feeding 100% or very close to 100% forage coming from this dried hay. So we've got a much drier forage going into the digestive system because remember grass has a lot of moisture in it and it's cooler weather. So they start to drink less and it takes a little while for the digestive system um, water balance to kind of level out and yeah, normalize again. Sure. So we see a lot of impaction colic. If you ask your local vet what's the biggest issue they see in the fall weather, it's impaction colic because we have this change in environment and that's affecting the horses twofold. So if you... Um, like to plan ahead and you have the ability to do that, it, it is a really good idea to slowly build up the amount of hay that you're giving and make sure that your horse is drinking, especially as the the weather is changing. And I know up here in Virginia, we've been a little bit lucky. We feel like um, it's not quite winter yet because we've had a really warm um, fall. But as soon as that first snap of cold weather comes, we're also going to see that affecting horses um, environmentally. So really make sure that they're while they're also eating plenty of forage and you can gradually build them up to that, that they're also drinking plenty of water to avoid that kind of um, imbalance in hydration in the gut. There you go. Good idea. Don't just go throwing an extra half a bale in there on Monday morning. Mm, yeah. And one more thing to leave the listeners with is, a half a bale of hay is not the same as a half a bale of hay. If you get my exactly. drift, you have to weigh. Because I go to many farms and they say, well, I've been feeding a half a bale of hay all winter long. Or I've been feeding a bale of hay to eat from my horses all winter long. And I don't know why they're losing weight. And you pick up one bale and it's 40 pounds. And you pick up another bale and it's 20 pounds. So that's a significant difference in the amount, the amount of hay that you're actually providing your horse. So get a cheap scale. For hay, you can use those uh, luggage scales. Now, the luggage can, scales or uh, fish scales are, are great. Or Absolutely. fish scales, yeah. Yep. But it's really good, especially with your 4-H and pony club groups, to get do tests with the kids and really get them to get an idea of what does a pound feel like? What does two pounds feel like? So when they pick up the hay, the, the amount of hay they normally give their pony every day, they're like, oh, this feels a bit light. I might give another flake today because it's a lighter bale. Very good. Uh, yeah, and after a while, if you're careful with that and, and you weigh it every day for a couple of weeks, you do develop a feel for it, don't you? You do, yep, yep, and that's, that's an invaluable skill. 
Cool. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Cubit, for explaining to us uh, how much our horse needs and why and the best way to do it. Where can folks get a hold of you if they've got more questions or have some uh, nutritional needs that need to be solved? Any more questions, you can look us up at performancehorsenutrition.com on the Internet. Give us a call. Email us. We'd be glad to help. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Well, there you have it. This podcast was made possible through the generous support of Kentucky Performance Products and listeners like you. This is Coach Jen, and I'll be back again soon with another tip. So until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.